When I was uh, a graduate student at Princeton in the early 1980s, I was working uh, at that time with John Taylor, and uh, I learned a great deal from studying the DSGE Rational Expectations Framework about anticipated versus unanticipated shocks, uh, permanent versus transitory shocks, and how people would adjust their intertemporal behavior. But I also believe in diminishing marginal returns. We're now, what, 30 years later, and we're still polishing, which you might say, the head of the same pin. I think that gets to the essence of the problem. The problem is not that these models are completely stupid and we should throw them away and do something else altogether. The problem is regarding these models, or indeed any economic models, as, uh, as the exclusive way of thinking about you know, a set of economic problems. You might say many questions are left unexamined if a precondition is that you have to use that set of techniques, otherwise you're not, quote, scientific. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's in a sense why this structure failed to give us helpful guidance in relation to the, the recent financial crisis because the elements that gave rise to it were by assumption ruled out of the models that were being used to describe it. And Robert Lucas wrote something that you uh, cite here, uh, I believe it was in The Economist, in response to we say, the Queen's question and, and the crisis. And his reaction was essentially that we couldn't predict crises of that kind because economic theory, which means his economic theory, show, right, demonstrates that crises of that kind cannot be predicted. Mm. Now, I think the Queen might legitimately in these cases will send me someone who has a different theory. <laughs> <laughs>